So I want to give shout outs to my boy Tito who gave me the comics to this Robert Kirkman made <laughs> comic outcast but we're not talking about the comics we're talking well a little bit we're talking about the show that has been produced by cinemax and that is outcast now outcast is created by robert kirkman who did robert kirkman is known for doing the walking dead but not only that he's done other stuff uh that's very popular now in the, in the industry and especially in the comic world but outcast was an interesting concept when my uh co-worker pitched it to me he said that basically it's a guy beating the shit out of people and getting those possessed people, he casts them out by beating the shit out of them. These possessed demon people. <laughs> um, so that's what I got the gist of it. And then I started reading a little bit of the comic. But now I'm onto the show. And I just got done with Outcast Season 1. And here are my thoughts. This will not be a spoiler review. I decided not to do a spoiler review. Maybe I'll do a podcast with it. Um... If anybody has seen uh, Outcast, but basically the gist of the Outcast is exactly where it's more to it. There's more to the story than just somebody beating the shit out of people and being able to lift their spirits, so to speak. You know, get these possessed people and get these demons out of them. Uh, and they these things, you don't really know if they really are demons or not. I still don't get the sense that maybe they're not truly too much of demons. There's something. They're like a parasite, which is kind of funny. I'm watching an anime called Parasite, and this kind of contrasts with this show, Outcast. So it's kind of funny that I'm watching back-to-back shows like this. Um... But we follow a guy named Kyle Barnes. Kyle Barnes is very recluse. He has a sister who, her name's Megan. He, she takes care of him, says, you know, you need to get back out there in the world. We find out that Kyle had a daughter and a wife at one point, but certain circumstances led to the wife having a restraining order on him. Um, so basically, he is able to, if he just, there's possessed people throughout the whole show there's possessed people throughout the whole show that have something within them and holy water this reverend comes along he's you know the church goer he he's the reverend he everybody not everybody but most of the, some people go into his church and like hear what he has to say he's done a lot of um exorcisms uh accomplished a lot of stuff uh but sometimes he needs something a little bit stronger and kyle has a key to basically he just touches somebody and they burn that's how he could tell that they're possessed or not possessed. I mean, there's a lot of twists and turns in this show. I will say in the very first three, four episodes of this series, which is about like, I want to say it's like a 10 episode series. Let me check for you guys real quick. It's about a 10 episode series. Uh, it's a 10 episode series. And what, uh, and it really starts off very slow. Like, the first three episodes starts off very slow. You're not knowing what the hell's going on. And honestly, I was thinking a lot of Preacher, AMC show. And I was like, Kyle reminds me of Preacher a lot. This show reminds me of Preacher a lot. But it seems like there's a little bit more th- going for it. There's a little bit more. Uh, it's not an action-packed show. By hand, by all hands, it's not an action-packed. When there is action, it's kind of entertaining. But I think what really holds this my interest and my attention other than like preacher is the fact that the characters are interesting the characters are interesting the things that are be uh, on them like kyle barnes the things that he has to go through is interesting um his past is interesting this whole thing that's going around them is interesting reverend and reverend anderson is such an interesting character because he's somebody that everybody kind of a lot of people do look up to him but he does questionable things throughout the series. Uh, Kyle is a sentimental character where you feel for him, but you would kind of interpret it like, well, Kyle, you've done some things where if a human eye would see this, like they would think you were batshit crazy. There's a lot of great characters in this show that I've really started to really like, especially towards the end of season one, especially at the end of season one. Um... So this show really holds my interest for the fact that there's a lot of things that are explained. They get explained throughout each and every episode. Uh, I think towards the half mark, the half point mark, it starts getting really interesting. You start caring for Megan, you know, Kyle's sister. You start caring for her husband, who I known as, who's known as Roy. I call him Roy because he was from the office, but uh, his real name is uh, Mark. And Mark wasn't it. 
he was, I thought he was going to be a one note kind of character in the beginning of the series, but he starts really grasping my attention and I start feeling for, he starts becoming a sentimental character. And then Reverend Anderson is so enthusiastic and so out there and is a very outspoken character that throughout the series, I think that's where a lot of my attention goes to is the relationship between uh, Reverend Anderson and Kyle Barnes. I mean, these two are working together to fight these forces of evil but it doesn't work out as you would think it would. It, it's not a beautiful friendship. It's more a just Kyle's trying to get back, to, trying to get his life back in order. And if that's the case, then he doesn't want Reverend Anderson. He doesn't. He tries to warn it where Reverend Anderson. Reverend Anderson warns Kyle. I mean, there's a lot of back and forth. There's a lot of struggle. The show really struggles. That that's if I had to define it. I mean, it's a struggle between with a lot of these, with humanity. A lot of these characters, their sanity, which I really really like. Where preacher didn't really grasp me. Where uh, preacher had a you know Dominique Cooper looked great as preacher, but it really didn't. There was characters in there that were interesting but it just didn't seem like it was going anywhere or when it did it was boring and it wasn't as interesting uh for some reason outcast is interesting because we do see a lot of things you, you don't know if it is people are getting possessed is this an alien life form you don't really know what's going on throughout this whole town that we're in um so outcast season one is it fantastic I, by all means i don't think it's a fantastic series i think it's an intriguing first season i think it's something that it, you could build upon especially the second season especially the endings of the 10th episode that we were left with outcast i think the characters are that's what grasps this show is the characters in general and uh, keeps your interest i think the acting is good uh, especially with reverend anderson i think he does a fantastic job uh reverend anderson is played by philip glenster i think uh megan uh ren schmidt i think she's really good i think her story and her backstory is really great and i think the actresses does a great job as well uh kyle barnes patrick Fugi, he does a good enough job he does carry uh he's a good leading man he does remind me of rick crimes of course uh, i think he does a good job i don't think he does a fantastic job because there's something a uh, little episodes here and there where i think he could have done a better job delivering in his acting but i think he does a good job nonetheless um i think there is some characters in here where <laughs> There's some stupidity throughout that goes around this season, but not a lot. Not a lot like Parasite that I'm watching right now. Uh, but overall, I think it's a. I think it's not a super solid series, and I can understand why people don't grasp onto the first season. But I think after the halfway point, it starts getting more interesting. You start kind of caring more for the characters. You start trying to figure. You start wondering like, where's this going to go next? I mean, you're just so intrigued with the storyline and where it's going, and you're intrigued what the characters are going to do next. I think this what this is why this show grabs you. Um, it doesn't fully grasp you. Because because you know somewhere in there it could be better you know somewhere with the conflict i mean there's a lot of conflict conflicting things and if you're not a very religious person or you don't like a lot of religious talk in the show this is not for you there's a lot of religious talk in here there's a lot of uh, that concept of good versus evil of sanity versus humanity i mean there's a uh, what is real and what is not uh, a lot of, there's if anything, this is a struggle. A, a lot. This really, really has me thinking that the, it's it, this whole show is a struggle. It's two people struggling on gaining the upper hand, and I think that's what a lot the show has to really say and what it's doing. Um, the cinematography looks beautiful. I think the shots, the directions, great. I think overall everything is great about this show. It's just somehow there's missing something. It's missing that piece where like, oh my god, this is mind blowing. Because there are some episodes that are really, really slow and some episodes where like, okay, we're just you're just really seeing the descent of insanity that's going around here. And there's a lot of characters and uh, it, 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 just more characters being introduced. And you just kind of, you just don't understand. You still don't understand fully what's going on at the end of season one. But overall, I think Outcast season one did its job by capturing my interest. I think season two has to really propel it. And I think at the end of episode 10, it really has. I mean, after episode 10 it really got me going like holy shit that's where they end it i want to see what happens after that uh i was there's some sad moments in here and then there's some like you know just crazy ass moments that you get from here i think the kid actors in the show is really 
uh, good as well, especially when they get possessed. I think some of the kids are really great. There's some graphic stuff that goes on in here that Walking Dead can't really... Well, Walking Dead does a little bit, but uh, good. But I think it, it works pretty well here. And it always makes me wonder what would have happened if like The Walking Dead was on Cinemax or on HBO. Uh, that's a show that like would have been more grittier and more bloodier and more in more true to the comics, I believe. But I'm glad that Outcast is on Cinemax where they could really shine, you know, with a lot of the material that was in the comics. So overall, though, the show is not bad. I do recommend it if you are a big Robert per Kirkman fan. If you're looking for something, it's definitely not like The Walking Dead. It's nowhere near like The Walking Dead, but it has an interesting kind of, kind of concept. And it's very... I mean, I've seen this concept before, but um, it's it's just overall kind of interesting. Somehow it grasps you just to watch more. So, And that's what basically Outcast is all about. So I'm Dan Making Down the Sun, so I can't wait to review Season 2 when that goes on. And when Season 2 comes, uh, hopefully I can review it episode by episode. So um, I want to thank you guys for listening. If you haven't already, please hit the subscribe button. We really appreciate it. Like the video if you like it. Comment below. Love to hear you guys' thoughts. And uh, what other property of Robert Kirkman do you like? Are you a big comic book fan? Have you read the comics of Outcast? Just let me know. And um, I'll see you guys later.